we begin in Munich and in Munich you can see some of my early shots that I took with the GR I was pretty bad at it I had no idea about the camera's capabilities and I was pretty much using it as a point-and-shoot it got to the point where I was taking random pictures of propellers in museums and devices that measure electrical circuits and it wasn't until I got to Istanbul that I started really exploring this focal length. I started seeing in 28 millimeters. I also discovered the Ricoh GR's amazing capability as a street photography camera. This picture is taken at 3200 ISO and it's sharp wide open at f2.8. The camera is small enough that no one really notices or cares that it's there. Istanbul was really the city of cats. They were everywhere and they had no problems coming right up to you. Here we can see the Blue Mosque from inside the Hagia Sophia. Still in Constantinople, I mean Istanbul. This was in the Modern Art Museum. As you can tell by now, I had really become accustomed to the one by one square crop ratio. It was very easy to switch between aspect ratios. This is a picture I took in Cappadocia. As the sun was setting, I was afraid the picture wasn't going to come out nice because with my previous compact cameras, it was easy to either blow out the sky or lose detail in the shadows. But the Ricoh's amazing DNG files had a lot of latitude in them for post-processing. I found a cheap flight to Oslo. It was a great balance of the old and the new control design. The Ricoh GR isn't just for street photography. I came back to London triumphant at a new understanding of the camera and its capabilities. With the Ricoh GR's relatively large APS-C size sensor, there's plenty of detail in the shadows and midtones. I was able to sneak in the Ricoh GR with the mini tripod into the British Museum. No one batted an eye, even though no tripods were allowed. I was able to capture this long exposure, 1.6 seconds. If you ever get a chance to visit the British Museum, you should do so. I have a feeling half of Egypt's treasures are in there. I went to Minsk in Belarus to capture the bleakness of this post-Soviet city. At least the buses were painted green. This scene brought back a lot of memories. I went to Berlin in the winter. It was cold, grey and there were walls everywhere. There was even one big wall running across the city. Apparently black is always the new black in Berlin. And the Ricoh GR just fit right at home. 3200 ISO, foggy. The camera had no problems with colder weather, 10 degrees below zero, freezing conditions. I highly recommend visiting Berlin if you haven't already. The whole place seems like a museum to World War II, the Third Reich, the occupation and the Cold War. Now it's home to hipsters and startups. This is f4.5, sharp throughout the frame. You can always rely on the Ricoh GR to be sharp throughout the frame starting from f4. This was in Oxford, Oxford University, Cambridge, another university town I wasn't accepted into. Cambridge, black and white conversion, always produced delightful results from the Ricoh GR. Many have said that it provides an almost filmic look, and I have to agree. I visited Bath. These were some Roman coins, the early ones. This was pretty much the first international currency used from Africa to Asia. It was all about trust, and everyone trusted the Caesar. I visited Edinburgh. One of their breakfasts is enough to keep you going for the whole day. It seemed like a great place to live. Even my pictures of the propellers were getting better at this point. Milan. Great dynamic range provided by the APS-C size sensor. Again, you can lift the shadows, recover highlights later in post-processing. I woke up very early to be one of the first in the Duomo. Highly recommended for the morning light. Again, 3200 ISO in museums. It's time for Asia. These are some fishing boats on the island of Koh Lanta in Thailand. This was tea time at the Hamariku Gardens in Tokyo. It was great being discreet. Kogan Falls, north of Tokyo in Nikko. 1 over 160 at F8. I ended up printing this photo out. I have a very nice 12 by 8 of it at home. With the 16 megapixels of the Ricoh GR, you can actually print decently large files. I was running back to catch the train to Tokyo when I saw these fishermen perfectly positioned in the lake. It would have been nice to have a longer focal length, but the Ricoh GR got the shot anyway. I was focused here on the sushi. I didn't want the chef in focus. 
and the Rico GR delivered perfectly. Osaka, where people were much friendlier than Tokyo, and I felt just like one big party going on. I met some other photographers there who instantly recognized the GR. Turns out there's a global community of GR shooters. Again, I took the GR out for a spin for some nighttime street photography in Kyoto. It's so small that no one notices, and you can use the snap focus function. You can fully press the shutter button without half pressing it, and then you'll have a shot perfectly in focus at the desired distance. I recommend setting it to 2 meters if you don't know what to set it to. I took the camera to Yakushima. It performed really, really well despite the fact that the island was constantly humid and was raining the whole time. I took special care to protect it from the rainfall. These are stumps of ancient cedar trees, Yakusugi, again in Yakushima. Some of them are over a thousand years old. To get to Yakushima you can either fly or take this ferry that I took from Kagoshima. It really feels like you're on an adventure with the open ocean with no land in sight. This is the Churami Aquarium in Okinawa. It was once the largest in the world. Now, as a scuba diver, it was pretty sad to see whale sharks confined to such a space. This was handheld at 1 60th of a second. Noodles in Okinawa. Thanks to the APS-C sensor, I was doing okay at 1600 ISO. I flew back to Tokyo and hiked up Mount Fuji. I went up and down in the same day. Absolutely exhausting. The hard part was coming down. Endless switchbacks and your knees are dead at the end. The Rico GR is only 257 grams. It doesn't slow you down and you can put it in a day pack. I don't remember how many 7-Eleven rice balls I consumed, but it was a lot. I used the Rico GR for architecture photography in Seoul. I almost always use spot metering, focused and recomposed. The depth of field never gets razor thin, so I generally had no problems keeping subjects in focus. Here you can see vertical distortion, but it's easily corrected using basic keystoning in Photoshop. This is the corrected version. The verticals are vertical. This was taken out of a moving cable car going up to Fancy Pan Mountain in Sapa, Vietnam. Some of the friendliest people I ever met, just a few hours north of Hanoi. I think I woke up at 4 a.m. to experience the opening of Angkor Wat. It's supposed to be tranquil and zen. What you don't see are the 200 other people behind me who had the exact same idea and the two Mavic drones flying overhead, buzzing around. I guess it's a good thing the monks are so peaceful. F5.6 I went hiking in the mountains of Taiwan. Here I was able to get a clear foreground, midground, and background in this quite dense and foggy forest. Taiwan is one of the friendliest countries I've ever been to, next to Colombia. The Twelve Apostles on the Great Ocean Road, just a short drive from Melbourne. This place really needed to come with its own Hans Zimmer soundtrack. Bondi Beach in Sydney, Australia. I knew the Rico GR wouldn't let me down if I placed my subject at the edge of the frames. The lens is sharp throughout. The Rico GR has a macro mode. It's activated between 6 and 12 centimeters subject distance. I used the macro mode to take a picture of this green tree python. It's so cute, isn't it? Again, hiking in the Blue Mountains. By this time, even my basic snapshots were looking a lot better. This was in Germany, the Mercedes-Benz Museum in Stuttgart. It's fairly dark in there, so it would have been nice to be able to shoot at lower ISOs, so I was pretty much stuck at ISO 1600. IBIS would have helped yet again. Exterior detail of the Sagrada Familia in Spain. I went down to southern Spain. The Rico GR with its 28 millimeters was perfect for architecture photography. Professional architecture photographers will tell you that it's about getting details. And if you really want more in the frame, just get the 28 or 35 out and stitch your images together. The Arabic influences on the arches in southern Spain. I flew to South America and at one point I woke up very early to be one of the first to climb up to Machu Picchu. This was after three days of hiking the Salkantai Trek. My advice, don't rent hiking boots, bring your own, otherwise you're going to get blisters the whole time and it's going to be quite a character building experience. This is a picture at the Mara salt mines, thousands of individual salt pools on a hillside. According to our guide, each family was given one portion of this mine. I'm not sure how true that is today. This is quite a memorable picture for me. It was near the start of the death road in Bolivia. We biked down the death road. Any breaks we took were very quick, 
and I always had to have at least one hand on the bike. So the GR was perfect because I could use the camera in all of its functions with one hand. It's truly a one-hand operation camera. It has the best ergonomics of any compact camera I've ever used. There was a lot of dust here, a lot of wind. It was just an extreme environment overall. The camera had no issues. Not to mention the temperature change. We started at the top and it was below zero, freezing conditions. And at the bottom, it was tropical. Train tracks to nowhere in Bolivia. It was a surreal experience going th through the salt flats of Bolivia. It felt like an alien world. This was taken out of a moving jeep. I had about three seconds total to compose and shoot this alpaca before it went out of sight. With a zoom, I'd be fumbling around, wondering about whether to take the picture at 50 or 85 or get some more compression or maybe get some more environment. Instead, I got a decent environmental portrait. It was super bright in the desert, and this was one two thousandths of a second. It's a good thing the GR has a built-in ND filter of two stops, so in extremely bright conditions, I could always bust it out at f2.8. These pink flamingos in the Bolivian Andes get their pigmentation from the plankton they consume. This was one of the few places where I really wanted a proper telephoto for a closer look at the birds and a compressed perspective. Nevertheless, I got a shot I was happy with, but it would have been nice to have a telephoto to play with. I estimate that I missed about 5-10% to of shots on this trip because I had a 28mm. But who knows how many shots I got because I didn't waste time switching lenses or focal lengths. We went hiking outside San Pedro de Atacama in Chile. With my GR I sprinted ahead of the group all the way up this hill so I could take more pictures. It was really high altitude, so I was completely out of breath and dizzy. But the views were worth it. How often do you see sand dunes and snowy peaks in the same photo? And I went to Easter Island as well. This was a funny picture because I count 30 heads in total, 15 stone heads and 15 human. This is a volcanic crater lake on Easter Island. Not much grows on Easter Island, but because of the unique microclimate here, you can experiment with various grasses and crops inside the crater of this volcano. And that's the Pacific Ocean you can see through the crack. 3.2 second exposure of water flowing over volcanic rock on Easter Island as the sun was setting. This is one of my favorite shots of the trip. The GR performed marvelously. Plenty of detail retained in the shadows. Cable cars in Rio de Janeiro, up Sugarloaf Mountain, getting ready to head back down the same mountain. Very, very faintly, you can see a tiny, bright white spot on the hills in the background near the center. That's the Christ the Redeemer statue. And that's exactly where I headed the next day. Unfortunately, at this point, I also discovered something about my Ricoh GR. Faint dust spots that started showing up as you close down the aperture. I didn't realize this was in a lot of my pictures until months later when I was going through the photos. It's annoying. But I did put the camera through its paces and I used it in very extreme environments. Now I did take special care to keep it in the lens case as much as possible. I didn't put it in my pocket very often, aside from maybe the bike ride or a couple of hikes. The dust problem is a problem on all compact cameras ultimately. Once dust gets in, it's really hard to get it out. That's why a lot of people prefer interchangeable lens cameras. It's just something I have to mention. 28mm is perfect for environmental portraits like the surfer dude I met in Rio. This was the Museum of Tomorrow. It reminded me of a ribcage from the bottom. It's a very cool structure. With a 28mm, I was more focused on getting the detail shots. Long exposure of waterfalls in Iguazu, using just the Rico GR and the Manfrotto Mini Pixie tripod. This was the Argentinian side. Make sure you check out both sides, the Brazilian and the Argentinian, if you can. The GR was pushed to its absolute limits here trying to take pictures of capuchin monkeys in Iguazu, Brazil. I don't expect a beginner with this camera to get it right because the low light autofocus was downright painful with the Ricoh GR. It mostly came down to luck. Now I was able to get the shot, but here I'm not showing you all the shots that were out of focus. It was time for the GR to take a vacation. It had done its duty, so I took it to Hong Kong for some street photography. Set it to f4 or 5.6 and you're good to go. 28mm is a great focal length in Hong Kong. With a small compact like the Ricoh GR, you just look like a clueless foreigner, which is absolutely the look you want to go for. Exploring more of the markets on the Kowloon side. This is the ladies market in Mong Kok. Lots of kitschy cheap trinkets, 
t-shirts, and endless opportunities for street photography. Behind the infamous Chungking mansions. If you want the full Wong Kar Wai movie experience, you'll have to wait till at least nightfall, even though the place isn't remotely as seedy as it once was. At most these days you'll be asked to buy SIM cards, or exchange your currency. Hong Kong is a truly vertical city. Don't forget to look up and down when you're there for the most interesting compositions. This is the old Star Ferry, and one of the last pictures I took on my trip. Over 5,500 photos, and I was happy with over 10% of them. Now my standards may not be as high as yours, but I was more than satisfied with the results I got from this camera. And ultimately, it really is about the photos you come back with at the end. In conclusion, the good. The lens is very, very sharp. The camera is compact and lightweight. 16 megapixels was usually enough, unless you want to print a bit larger, zoom in and crop. The ergonomics were superb, and the 28mm focal length is a pretty great one if you're only going to have one. The bad of this camera, low light autofocus, really needs an improvement. There's the dust issue, which plagues a lot of compact cameras. It wasn't weather sealed, but actually not many cameras are truly weather sealed, especially compact ones. No in-body image stabilization. Now this is a pretty recent addition to compact cameras, but just have to mention it would be nice if it was there. And I noticed noise, ISO of 1600 and above. 3200 was usable, 6400, I didn't even want to use it in emergencies. Ricoh GR isn't just for street photography, it's a great camera for travel and ultralight backpacking. If you've shot with the Ricoh GR, let us know in the comments section. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys later.